So how can glory and the flood work together? Grace is the only possibility. So grace, as a way of bridging the gap between the flawless and the flood, has always been the dominant principle of the whole speech. Don't ever think that this day you're not going to risk something. There is a risking. In order to become creative warriors, you have to risk. She risked her life to go before the king to a place that she got supernatural favor and grace. Satan never fights you on the basis of who you think you are. He fights you on the basis of who God says you are. So every time Satan comes, he comes to challenge you on the revelation, if you are the son of God. I'm here to tell you that Jesus through the Holy Ghost is still working miracles in the earth today. If I'm telling you he's still alive and his spirit is still in us and he is still working miracles right now. I'm going to tell you this and I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, God will remove every form of iniquity, every ounce of iniquity that has been around you. The Bible says a decree is like a hammer. Shall I not break the rock? Declare something in the realm of the spirit and watch the hand of the Lord perform. He will do it. We have to understand that the greatest weapon we have been given as spirit-speaking people, created as a spirit of God, we have spirit ability to create and to kill out. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth and now he's ascended back to the Father and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it. Hello, Saints. This is Dr. Francis Miles. Welcome back to another dream time. We're looking forward with Apostle Lee to be able to do some powerful times of dream interpretation for you guys today by the Spirit of God. But I want the man of God to bring a teaching for the next 30 minutes on dreams. And then we are going to come back. We've got quite a number of dreams. Then we'll look at some of those dreams. Apostle, welcome to dream time, to dream interpretation hey. life. Amen. Great to be here, Dad. Great to be here. Love you. And so, uh, Mr. Director, let's just uh, let's give him the whole full screen and let him bring some teaching. And then I'll come back in. Praise the Lord. God bless you, beloved. Welcome again to another episode of Dream Interpretation. Tonight, I'm going to be teaching dreams and the end time. Dreams and the end time. If you have your word of God, come with me to the book of Acts. Chapter number two, and we're going to see how powerful dreams really are. Acts chapter two, verse number 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So doing this outpouring, three things going to occur. Number one. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, too. And number three, your old men shall dream dreams. So during the end time, we can see that dreams are part of the end time. Dreams are a weapon that God is going to use in the end time to bring the church to a greater glory and reap a harvest that John prophesied in Revelation, when he said that he saw a he saw a number that no man can number. The first thing I want to address is how powerful and valuable dreams are. For many years, many leaders in the body of Christ taught and said to various people that God does not use dreams anymore. 
if Joel is correct, Prophet Joel, because the, the writer in Acts is quoting Prophet Joel. And Joel is saying and stating to the church how valuable, how powerful dreams are. That dreams are part of the end time. It is what God is going to use in the end time to usher us in and give us insight. You will see throughout the, the, the history of your Bible, three things are connected throughout your word. Prophecy, visions, and dreams. In fact, one third of your Bible is about dreams and visions. So do you think dreams are very valuable? Yes, they are very valuable. Because according to the writer, God is going to use dreams to close out the age. And if you're watching me tonight, and if you're a dreamer like I am, if you're a dreamer, God is going to use you in a very unusual way to bring insight, to bring revelation, to bring warnings, to bring information, and yes, even to bring direction. Because dreams is God's way of putting information into us that the enemy cannot steal. This is why earlier when Apostle Mahal was teaching, he, he was stating to us, that the enemy and God is fighting over us while we are sleeping to sow into us dreams. The enemy waits for us to sleep so he can sow into us to infect our dreams. But there's a couple of things I want to point out in here. This is very powerful. Number one, it's an outpouring. It's an outpouring of the spirit of God to impact all flesh. So number one, in the end time, they're going to be increase of dreamers. I'm going to say that again. In the end time, and we are right now in the last days, there are going to be multiplied dreamers on the earth. I like to put it this way, that God is going to cover every, every corner of earth with a dreamer. And if that's true, and it is, because look what he said, he says that your, your old men shall dream dreams, plural. That means that there's going to be increase in dreams, increase of dreamers. And if there's increase of dreams in dreamers, then there must be increase of dreams interpreters. Now, before I begin, I want to say this. I want to say this because this is very important. The interpretation of the dream is just as valuable as the dream. So this is why when you dream a dream from the Lord, you are, are, are responsible for seeking out, as Solomon said, that he, he hides a mystery so that kings can seek it out. A dream is a mystery that God put inside of us. And when you are not able to interpret it right away, what God is doing to you, I want you to hear me tonight. When you can't interpret it right away, because I've experienced this as an interpreter, there are times whenever God give me a dream or a dream is given to me, and I'll say to the individual, I need to seek out God for this. Because this one of the laws of interpreting dreams is this. If you do not have the interpretation right away, you must apply what Solomon said. It is the mystery of a king to seek out. It is our job to seek out that mystery because that dream is a mystery that God has given us. So therefore, when you cannot interpret right away, do not be troubled. It's God saying to you, seek me out for this mystery. So I want to share this with you as we are going through this teaching tonight. I want you to see that the interpretation is just as valuable as the dream. Let's go to Acts chapter, I'm, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 40. Let's just see what I'm saying, how powerful the interpretation is just as valuable as the dream. 
Genesis chapter 40, verse number 8. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpretation. There is no interpreter for it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not the interpretation belongs to God. Tell me them, I pray you. See, in this end time, in this end time, as the dreamers multiply, the interpreters must multiply. And many of you now are already experiencing an increase of dreams. So therefore, what God is going to do in this, in this last days, which we're already in, he's going to multiply the ability to be able to interpret the dream because those dreams are very valuable to the people that are waiting. As they went, as they could not interpret, Joseph said, tell them to me, I pray you. See, for every dreamer, there's an interpreter. Because the, the interpreter, the interpretation is just as valuable as the dream. Number two, I want to point out in there. Then it says, your old men shall dream dreams. I believe what God is going to do in this end time. Because one of the times I was studying this passage, the Holy Spirit said these words to me. He said, when I said, old men shall dream dreams, he said to me, son, there are many men and women that have fallen away from their calling, their assignment. They will. They they have the ability. They have the the gift to interpret dreams, but they are falling away. And he said that during this outpouring, this overshadowing of the spirit of God, it shall wake up those old men that have fallen away. That have have fallen to sleep on the assignment. It's going to wake them up, and they're going to come into a realignment because there's a greater glory that's going to come through. What God has planted in Acts chapter 2, verse number 17. We're going to have increase of dreams, increase of interpreters. God has determined how he's going to speak in the end time. God has determined. Acts 2, 17 God has already determined how he's going to speak. He's not going to just speak through prophecy. He's not going to just speak through visions. He's also going to speak through dreams. He's also going to speak through dreams. So dreams is a, a way, an avenue that God is going to use in the end time. And this is why that we uh, this is why this sessions, what Apostle Miles is doing is so valuable to you and I. Because what it does is it speaks to the dreamer out there. It tells that dreamer, yes, God speaks through you. And your dream is as valuable as prophecy. Your dreams is just as valuable as visions. That's why God is re realigning us right now in this hour. Because he has already determined how he's going to speak in the end time. Psalm 16 and 7 says this. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Who has given me counsel and instructed me in the night season. This is very powerful. Did you know that dreams is a way that God enters and gives you counsel? He can counsel you himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. Angels of the Lord can enter in and give you counsel. God uses dreams to counsel us, to warn us. To give us prophetic insight, to give us information, to give us details. And this is how God is going to bring the church into a greater glory in the end time. He counsels us during the night season. The next point I want to bring out is 
this text tells us how valuable dreams are to God. So should they be to you and I. And I want to park here for a minute because I want to talk directly to you that are dreaming and have excelled in it and increased in dreams. Do not discard your dreams in this season. Do not just brush them off. In fact, while I'm speaking right now, the Holy Spirit is instructing me to say to someone, many of you right now, that he is awakening you, refreshing you, and cleaning you so that you can dream yet again. There is an awakening coming into you right now for you to dream again. Some of you, I'm seeing by the Spirit of the Lord, there was blockage where you have not dreamed in a long time. I prophesy Acts 2 and 17 over you. That the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. And it's time for you to dream again. It's time for you to see again. It's time for you to be counseled in the night hour. We are now in the end time. And God is using dreams as a weapon. This means the dreams are going to be so powerful. This is very powerful. That Acts 2 and 17 shows us that the, these dreams are going to be so powerful. That they're going to be so detailed, so awakening, so alive. And some of you are already experiencing this right now. I'm sensing that many of you already spent experiencing it right now, where the dreams are, are so vivid, so, so detailed already, and so colorful. That's because, look what it says. It said, your old man shall dream dreams. And isn't it fitting that in Acts, it's where way, way the writer is using the prophecy of Joel to announce what God is going to do in the end time. And then he gives us an insight in Acts, the 16th chapter, verse 9 through 10. Let me show you what is about to overtake you. Acts chapter 16, verse 9 through 10. In fact, what, what Paul had a night vision, which is a dream. And it was so detail-oriented so, so, so informative that Paul received his next assignment right after the Holy Spirit restricted them and told them not to preach in Asia. What I'm saying to you after tonight, that the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. The, the Spirit of God now is going to be activated according to Acts chapter 2, verse number 17. That you're going to increase. You're going to be, what Paul received was direct insight on where to go. What city. There was a visitor that came in his dream in Acts, the 16th chapter, and called him by name. Some of you right now, you're about to have dreams. You've been looking for answers. You've been looking for insight. You've been wanting to know which way to go, what, what business to open. Glory to God. What, where to go next? What city should I be in? And God is about to answer you specific. See, in the outpouring of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 17, God is going to give us specifics. And the Lord said these words to me. He said, son, I want you to see Acts chapter 2, verse 17, where I'm pouring out my old, my spirit upon all flesh. He said, that is a a shower, that is a rain, a flood of my spirit coming down upon earth. And he said this to me. He said, you remember the scripture where Paul said, first that which is natural, then that which is spirit. He said, I want you to look at it this way. When was the first time I rained on planet earth? When was the first time I called it the rain? I said, with Noah. He said, exactly. He said, I, it, the rain came down, it flooded the earth. It is a natural picture of what I'm about to do for the planet earth. This time, it's going to be my spirit. And my spirit is going to hit all flesh. 
And I'm going to unlock prophets, prophecy. I'm going to unlock visions. He said, but I'm also going to unlock dreams. And dreams are going to be my weapon on how I'm going to enter into many of the people. And I'm going to tell them, I'm going to give them specifics, just like I did with Paul. I'm going to tell them, do not travel 95. Do not go to Seattle. Do not get on that plane. Do not go here. I'm going to give them specifics so that they will know what the enemy have planned for them would not overtake them because I can now enter them through an avenue that I created to give them counsel in the night hour. Many of you are about to receive insights. You are about to receive hidden mysteries through your dreams. Because in Acts 2.17, it is God pouring out on all flesh. Tonight, I want you to position yourself. And I want you to get ready for this outpouring that God promised to Acts 2 and 17 to hit all flesh. All flesh. Now, we know that he's not complete. Because Acts 2 and 17, that was not all flesh. We are part of that in time. There's going to be a revolution, a revival of revivals like never before. They're going to be dreamers, dreamers, interpreters. They're going to rise and many of you are going to elevate from just dreaming and you're going to be able to interpret by the Spirit of God. You saw what Joseph did. Joseph said, give me the dream. See, because the interpretation is just as valuable as the dream. Let's look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 27 through 28. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. Watch verse number 28. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. What is what uh, what what is about to uh, take place, family? Is this Daniel teaches us that there will be a separation. Daniel also shows us that there, in the last day of the outpouring of God's Spirit, witchcraft and sorcery will no longer be able to help mankind. That means you that are watching me tonight, God's gonna position you where the witches and soothsayers. Where the psychics used to be able to pollute God's people, my God, what God's going to do in the end time, God's going to God's going to close the way they won't be able to interpret, they won't be able to see, they won't be able to know. But God will have a people like you that He is going to position that they're going to have to come and get you. Daniel is a seed of the harvest of the outpouring of Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Family, we are, we are now in that time where the soothsayers, where, where the psychics are losing their influence and God is positioning you. That's why sessions like this, when Apostle Francis Miles had put together, it's so crucial and so valuable. Because what we have put together is two that have the ability to not only dream, because both of us are dreamers, but we also have the ability to interpret. And anything from God is transferable. Hallelujah. So the out dreams are the end time vehicle that God is going to use to move now. The other part I want you to see is that the king had to seek out Daniel. That means many of you, men and women of great authority, what they used before, they won't be able to use. Now they have to turn to the spirit-carrying 
dreamer, the spirit carrying interpreter, and that's you and I. We will usher them in. And dreams, interpretation of dreams, is going to be another way that God's going to use to reach the unsaved, the unrighteous. And we will be able to tell them what soothsayers, psychics won't be able to do. We will be able to walk right in, right in front of the audience. They was there. The soothsayers were there. But they could not answer, could not give. But God revealed it to a dreamer. He revealed it to an interpreter. And God is getting ready to do the same for you. And finally, I want to share this. I want you to see how powerful this is going to be in the end time, what God has for you and I. When you see what God is doing in Acts 2 and 17, he says, it should come to pass, says the Lord, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. The Lord spoke to me and said, son, do you see what I'm about to do? He said, the old men shall dream dreams, but the young men, the young women, the young daughters shall prophesy and have vision. He says, in the end time, in this, in this era, in this outpouring, it's going to be the greatest merge of the generation. There will be no more separation from generation to generation. We're going to come together because my dream and that young man's vision is going to produce something. My dream and that young lady's prophecy is going to produce something. And God is going to merge the generation together and produce a unity for the body of Christ where we will overtake this planet and overtake this earth and lead millions upon millions to the cross of Jesus Christ. It is how God is going to bring an incredible merge, an incredible spirit of unity because the old man dreams dream, but the young man have vision. The young lady going to be prophesying glory to God, but God is going to use this to bring the generations together. No more division. God is going to use dreams, visions, and prophecy to destroy division in the body of Christ. It is how God is going to cause us to assemble together. And as we assemble together, the information from your dreams, the information from her prophecy, the information from his vision shall come together and produce a power and the glory that the body of Christ has never seen before. Dreams and the end time. It's how God is going to overthrow the adversary. Tonight, I want you to receive this blessing that is found in Acts 2 and 17. Understand dreams and the end time. It's how God is going to close the age in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We're going to begin to interpret some dreams right now. Uh, Papa Miles and I, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you is my decree. What a word. My God, my God, what a word. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I can tell you, for all those FMI followers out there, my wife is working on a dream journal that's going to blow your mind. When you see it, everybody will be running to get it. She's, I mean, it's one of the best products she's ever developed, as far as I'm concerned. So it's going to be amazing. So Amen. We, we will debut it with her live on Dream Interpretation Live in a, when she's ready. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, course, I just emailed you the... Um, I just emailed you the dreams. Okay. If you can check your email. Uh, okay. Some dreams that came in, and uh, we may be able to pull in some dreams from the audience, but I want to focus on the ones that was emailed. Praise the Lord. Uh, since the, the, the reason we do this with Dream Interpretation Live is because we, 
we, and it, we, we, we just want, we see it as a ministry to some of our partners that are following me and Apostle Lee. And so we thank God for you guys just being there. I mean, coming and just hooking up with us, you know. Uh, but at the same time, we will be working on a book on, on dreams that me and Apostle are going to release that book this year. So we want to just get you ready, simmering for that revelation. I will Amen. everybody on YouTube and Facebook. My God, this is some good stuff. Make some noise and tell somebody, listen, you cannot meet dream interpretation live. It's, it's happening right now. And dreams are about to get interpreted. So, Apostle, let me know if you received that, the email. Okay. Amen. It just said the, the message, today's dreams, to interpret. I'll send it to your beautiful email. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes, I have. Amen. So you can start with the first one. Okay. Now, you sent me one by a name, Amy. Do you want me to do that one first? Amy. Okay, you can start with Amy. Okay. Let me go back to that one. Yes. Okay. So Amy had a, had two dreams. And um, so the first dream uh, Amy had when when uh, was 16, said that uh, I'm at the foot of the cross with Jesus during his crucifixion. I am on the ground sort of kneeling, I guess looking up at him. There are other women there, but I don't know who they are. I looked up at Jesus' face and he has a tear rolling down his cheek. The tear falls and hit me on my cheek. When this happened, I jerk awake. The feeling in, the, in this dream was so unbelievably powerful. It was like I understood his great suffering and he understood mine. I have never forgotten that dream for all the years, these years. I truly believe the Lord appeared to me in my dream. I don't know if I'm a prophet, so to speak, but he definitely visited me. Now, this dream, um, Amy, was a dream of um, uh, invitation, okay? What God was inviting you to was the message of the cross. That's why you felt the suffering in your dream. So he wanted you to feel how powerful the suffering was the tear that fell from his cheek to your cheek was an impartation. And, it, I, I, and I believe what God was doing was bringing you, wanted you to seek out the message of the cross, the, 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 the suffering that, that he went through, that he was going to bring healing, restoration to many people that you would share with. The second dream, this dream she had a few nights ago, I was walking around a big house doing a blessing or something. I was carrying a clear crystal candlestick. That's the anointing. Or you was carrying your anointing. Candlestick representing the anointing. Or the power of the grace that God has given you. Looking with a, a, a looking, looking thing across on it. So this message, God wanted you to see that from age 16 to now, that message still is yours. Because that cross is still there. Okay? And almost like a bottle, but more, a more on me. This thing was filled with my blood. My blood was was dripping onto the floor as I was carrying this thing around. I don't think I was sprinkling my blood or anything. I was just carrying it from room to room, and it was dripping out on up, up, up on the floor. I had the sense that my blood was very powerful substance. I don't remember much else. That dream is also the dream from your 16, it is God showing you that the, the, the elevation or the increase of the message have now went your anointing, the candlestick, okay, to the cross is still there, that message is still there, but what God has added to you is now he's telling you understand the blood of Christ. Get a great understanding of the blood of Christ so that the house or the place that God releases you to that blessing from the blood will begin to bless every area that you walk. Every area you walk, God is saying, I want to bless it. I want to bless it. And I'm releasing the blessing of the blood everywhere your feet tread. That's what that dream is. 
Uh, that is some good stuff right there. That is some good stuff, son. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Amen. So now we, uh, the ones I sent you, there's a Deborah there. You see that? Okay. Okay, Deborah. Okay, Deborah. Add me at FrancisMiles.com. Okay, got it. Says, uh, okay, wait a minute, uh, passed it. Okay. God bless you, and Apostle Robinson. I would like to submit a dream I had recently for interpretation dream. I had the intention to mix some garlic with water in a bowl to take it to a science class. I will be attending. I pulled up to the convenience store, went in, a little girl was playing with the bowl. I tended to use, to use. I felt she would be okay with, with me taking that bowl. And I took it and left. On the way to school, which I realized was my high school in my hometown, I decided to turn around and go home. But it was my parents' home. Just as if I was were a high school girl again, living at their house. I passed by droves of people heading to school. As I was going to the opposite direction to my home, I began to say to myself that I was going to be late to school. I remember now driving to school, but there were no people around because they were already at the school. And I was apparently running late. I was worried about going in late and worried that I may not even be able to go to class at all. I began to imagine what it would feel like to try to go in late and imagine skipping class and never going at all. This dream, Deborah, is God giving you opportunity to rewrite something that fear stole from you. Come on. It is, it is God saying, I'm going to take you back, okay? So right. Anytime in a dream, anytime a dream when you go to school, it is the Holy Spirit giving you an invitation to learn something, okay? So what God is doing through this dream is taking you back to give you another opportunity to rewrite something that fear stole from you. But this time, God wants you to be delivered from the spirit of worry. That's very good. Wow. I mean, I thought that, I mean... I mean that's a good one. I, mean, I just love the, when you say every, every time you see a school in your dream. Now, by the way, since this is why we are doing this is because we want you to learn. And the book we're going to come out with is going to have many of these uh, symbols, uh, 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 um, uh, keys to interpreting your dreams. But a school, you know, is always an invitation to, for more learning, you know, yeah. and, and usually it's because the Holy Spirit wants you to learn some stuff. So that is amazing. Uh, uh, that is amazing. Well, uh, we have another one by, uh, by, by Annabelle that is quite short. Uh, can you read that one? Yes. Okay, so, Annabelle. In 2018, I had a very strong dream twice. This was in the time Yom Kippur in those fall feasts. On dream, I was sitting in the passenger seat of my truck alone and my two horses in the trailer in the front as they're pulling my truck. Some days later during these feasts, I dripped of me in my truck, in the passenger seat. The trailer was in the front of the truck and the horses was pulling everything like Santa sleigh. We were gliding across the sky and, and really saw different stops. My husband, brother, and our daughters was living in Colorado. That was our first stop. I can't, I continue to bring this before the Lord to be obedient. I shared with my husband as we were preparing to retire and leave Illinois, his brother invited me to stay with him and his wife with our two dogs. We found a place nearby for the horses. Things turned upside down. It wasn't working for the dogs or where the horses was boarded. So off I went to a hotel. I spent nights and during the day praying and seeking the Lord, if this was all a mistake, wrong place, out of God's timing. I read scripture, cried, and laid in the bed wondering, now what? Through a new connection, I met a place for my horses to be safe until the Lord showed me what's next. I had difficulties with being bold in who I am, and my focus 
being clear and honest with grace as my gift is mercy. So I had some issues. I was tested in this place. I invited a lady. I met at the hotels to stay with me because she was in a difficult place. Within a few days, I had three prayer partners from Illinois call and ask what was going on. They were concerned, and so I shared. They said to pray about the situation. I talked to my husband. We prayed. He told me she needed to be let go. That was hard for me to come into a greater place of knowing boundaries and a tough love. We've been in Colorado for almost three years. No new connection like I had in Illinois. A friend called me yesterday, and she dreamed that I was by myself walking towards the mountain, hitchhiking along the road in a plain cloth. We're near. We are nearing seventy-five, and I know there's more. But I haven't had a recent dream, but with pure on Passover, Pentecost, Yah is up to something more. God is good. Okay. So the dream, the dream where the horse is in front, this is God showing you anytime you move in the air, it means to elevate in revelation. Mm. It means to elevate in revelation. But there are some things in here that need to be pointed out because there's there's a move or you know the old saying putting the cart in front of the horse. You see? So in other words, there's things where you move before time, but God is going to use this to elevate or bring you to the heights of his spirit. Okay. There's also a repeat in here because there's something from the old city that came. This is what calls the uh, move before or a uh, move ahead of time. Okay. So what God is showing you in this dream is that the thing that interrupts his clarity need to be broken in this season. The thing that because through a new connection, you met a place for your horses. So there's a connection common that will bring clarity so that no longer will you miss the timing of God. This is the dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it, man. That is, uh, praise the Lord. You know, I just, that's the thing. You know, God is, I mean, I just love how direct, God directs people in the dreams, man of God. It's yes. amazing that the God of the Bible has never changed, you know. The dreams are still a huge language of the Holy Spirit, and it's actually God is speaking more than we thinking he's speaking, but he is. Now, there's another one where I'm going to read it for you, and then you can interpret this apostle. Okay. This is uh, from Simon. These are two clear and distinct dreams. Fifteen years ago, while while in my house, con uh, my house uh, country in Africa, I dreamed that I'm, I am a brother in that, that I and a brother in Christ went to lodge in a hotel. The president of our country was lodged in that same hotel, and we both went to greet him, but he received me alone in his room, asked me to open my mouth. As I did, he spat into my mouth. And asked me to go and uh, go and what uh, uh, and, uh, and whatever I say shall be as I have said. Then two, three years ago, 2019, I had a dream in a conference organized by Pastor Chris Orokiemi in London, England, from my hotel building to, to his was just about five minutes walk. On my way to the conference hall, I met Pastor Chris with other ministers having some discussions. I kept loitering around until, until he took notice of me, called me and said to me, whatever you say, I will believe it and it shall come to pass. Well, you know what I say in this too, son, I feel like this person is being promised a ministry of dominion and authority because all of these, uh, the, the metaphors in his dream are men of authority. The president has tremendous authority over a nation. Uh, Pastor Chris is a global authority figure in the body of yes. Christ. You know, and in the spitting of, uh, I mean, I know, I know in the natural it looks awkward for somebody to speak in, to spit in your mouth, but there is, a, but we know that uh, speaking 
as you know, I know that in Africa, for instance, there is the there is a statement in Africa that uh, you know he said the saliva of an old man never misses. The meaning is, you know, the meaning is whatever they say. You might say, hey, but if they're older than you, you know, you don't take it carefully because if they're trying to bless you or curse you, both can happen. You know? Yes. But I, that, that's what I'm seeing in this dream, that it's, um, it's like God is, well, is, 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 there is a similar calling. There's a, there is a mantle of authority, whatever ministry they are, they are called to, and God is using these two uh, um, men to, de to demonstrate this, this. It looks like the, same, the dreams are one, but go ahead. What do you say? No, that's absolutely right. You're right on, Dad. That's absolutely right. It is, it is the it's the natural authority meeting the spiritual authority. Mm -hmm. So whoever this this young man that dreamed this, God is showing him that he's going to be able to walk in both authorities, that he's going to clothe him with dough, and it's going to separate him from his generation of, of before. God is going to do a new thing with him, like you said, that. It's the, it's the authority of the nation and the authority of the spiritual realm meeting, and both of them are going to be an impartation to this young man. And he's going to walk in both of those equal authority over the nation and in the spirit realm as well. That's in the body of Christ. Wow. Why don't you read the next dream? Okay. So the next dream is... Um... um Alicia. My name is Alicia, and I had a brief but uh, menacing dream last night. I was walking in my old neighborhood and ran into a friend whom I had not seen in at least 20 years. She was standing at a corner shop and was wearing a long, dark coat. Then I observed that she had a large black dog with her that looked more like a wolf. The dog began walking towards me, and as he did, I called out to her to stop him, but she said that he would not attack. Suddenly, the dog sprang up, and as he did, I realized that I was holding a newborn baby against my chest. He covered the baby's entire head with his mouth and then went backwards. He did it a second time, and as he was biting into the child's head, I woke up. I never had a dream like this remotely similar. Coincidentally, one day ago, I finally started an online business, something that I've been wanting to do. This dream is a very common dream. So Alicia, this dream is dealing with, the baby represents something precious that God has given you, a gift. It's either a ministry, a business, or something that God has entrusted you with. Whenever you dream about babies in a dream, it's something that God has entrusted precious with you. And in this case, it's your business. Now, the woman that you have not seen in years, this represents something from your past. It's about to resurface. Just before you launch your business, they're going to be in an attack. Because the dog swallowed now, the good news is this. What you need to do immediately, even today, in fact, I rebuke that dream by the blood of the lamb. I rebuke the attack. I counsel the attack, the planned attack of the enemy to steal what God is about to birth through you. And I decree right now that you will be divinely protected. The woman that's in the dark coat represents something from your past trying to resurface because anytime you go to your old neighborhood, it means to go back to something and, and that something is trying to re, re, re to connect to you. So you need to be wise in this hour. Okay. You need to be wise in this hour. Walking in your dream means that you are on the path that God has you, but something is trying to interrupt what God is about to walk you into. So it, it is a plan and plot of the enemy to, so somebody's going to show up 
and they're gonna say, "Oh, it's not that bad," or they're gonna they're gonna pretend like it's they're not gonna hurt you, or they're gonna they're gonna say, "Oh, this this not gonna take place," and they are setting you up to steal what God has given you to birth in the earth. That's the dream. Wow. Now, uh, 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 um, man of God, I'm going to give you a, a few just short ones so you can just go like this because we don't have a lot of time because of some things I got to do. But I'm just glad we're able to give these people time. I, I, I'm going to give you from, some things from the audience. So if you can okay. read what comes up in... Uh, 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 what is this? I'm going to give you a little bit of what I'm, I'm looking here. I saw a couple okay. of ones that were interesting from the audience. Not very long, but uh, they were interesting to me. Okay, we start with this one. Can you read that, Apostle? Yes. I was covered in gold ants as if they were working on me. I was laying down. They lifted and tur turned me. When I realized it was ants. I woke up knocking one off of my head. This is a good dream, T.W. <laughs> ants represents preparation. They also represents wisdom. It all. They also represent preparation. So the dream, the ants, and gold. Gold means the deity of God the wealth of God, and the power of God. So the ants was actually preparing you, prepping you. Come on. In fact, they even turned you to get you, to get you prepared so that the enemy cannot hit you from the rear or the front. But fear overtook you. So what God yes. is showing you, T.W., is that you need to be delivered from fear before this actually occur. So you're about to walk into a major preparation, but God is saying to you, you must be delivered of fear or because you're going to interrupt what looked like something is going to harm you is actually going to be blessing you. Wow, that's amazing. I kind of thought the same thing, that God looked good to me. So yeah. uh, now let's do this, Danielle. <laughs> Read that, and I'll, it's got two parts to it, and you can read the whole thing. So read the okay. first part, and I'll give you one. Okay. I had a dream about a former pastor. I kept going to his house to seek deliverance for myself and dad. Okay. It's, it's her dad, I was struggling to hear him, and that was because he left his house and went out his truck. To his truck. And then I think this, she follows up with this one. I think uh... talking from a distance, but was listening to worldly music. I left his house, made a right turn and drove down the street called Division. Then instantly I was driving down into the tunnel as if we. Yeah, I don't I don't see the part, the other part of that. As if we he... died, as if we died, but then was taken to the basement of a church to be judged by the women of this church. Yeah. This, is a, this is a dream that you're about to see something that's going to disturb you. Come on. That's what I thought. When you see this, judgment is going to be passed upon you from the people that's connected to the person that you see it. And the basement means that you're going to move out of their grace. They, you're going to be moved from their grace and and basically submerge or, or try to be hidden. Whatever you're about to see, you was not prepared to see. And when you see it, the people that designed to protect the individual that you see it, it's going to come against you in judgment form. Wow. Actually, she says here, man of God, that's so powerful. In real life, two weeks later, he kicked me out of the church. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's really, yeah, that's, it's, it's quite on point. It's quite on point, eh? Wow. <laughs> what about this one, Apostle? What about this one? By Kabul. Okay. Okay. I dreamt I was in a white car with my husband driving, then was stopped by traffic cops. 
saying we had outstanding tickets. I told them we will sort it out later. I'm going to give birth. Wow, go ahead. Okay. So this dream is uh, the enemy trying to interrupt what you're about to birth. So what's anytime anytime the cops enter and say I, then I gave birth to a boy and realized he had stuff in his face and I I didn't clean the baby a okay all right so now this dream uh Kabad the tickets that the cops gave y'all represents what's in the generation trying to chase that baby you gave birth to. That's right. So the Bible says agree with the adversary swiftly. Okay. So the tickets represents the bloodline, something trying to pursue the baby. Okay. Now the good news is that you clean the baby. That's good. That means that God is giving you the insight on how to clean the bloodline so it won't affect the baby that you're about to give birth or what you have given birth to. That's good, man. Yes. Praise wow. God. Man, that's what I thought. You know? Yes. <laughs> that, uh, you know, that it, there was an interception. There is outstanding tickets. I mean, there's some, there's some iniquities in the bloodline. Yes. And the yes. police, and the police, the cops are the are the familiar spirits that have been that are that are surveillance spirits over the bloodline, you wow. know. But the fact that gave birth to the baby and wow. was able to clean it means God God's giving you a way to clean it out. Yes, Amen. So and she has birth. the power to do. Is she cleaning it? God is showing her she has the power to do it. Yes, and definitely, you know, the court of heaven is very much involved in the cleaning your bloodline. That's why you are seeing the. You are seeing yourself going to court, so that is Amen. very, very powerful. Wow! Now let's let's do this one, Apostle, before we close. What okay. about this one, by Francine okay. Lewis? Okay, I saw my pastor with a swollen ankle. I went to pray for her, but she responded, "God doesn't use people who walk in darkness." Another dream. This same person laid hands on me and it felt genuine and I felt peace and fell to the floor like a pillow. Anything else? Is that it? Mr. Director, do we have anything else? Maybe I'll see if my director will find it, but uh, I'm trying to get used to putting some of these comments off stream yet, but I think okay. you can, yes. If we okay, that's it. Okay, so Francine, that dream is uh is, is dealing with correction, and yes. so the correction once correction is done, impartation will be received by you. Because uh the the pastor says to you about darkness, and then and then another dream, the same person laid hands on you, and, and it felt genuine. So that means that the correction. Is love coming to you so that 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 now here's the thing about correction. If you receive it, you can receive what's come with the correction, which is in this That's dream right. uh, impartation. So right there, see you felt peace and you felt to the floor like a pillow. That means that the impartation is coming to you after you receive this correction from that leader. Wow. Now, Apostle, let's let's uh read one more, uh one more from uh, the one that came through the email. Can you okay. just mention the name and read another one? Powerful stuff. Okay. So this is from Latonia from Virginia. Uh, says, uh, this dream was very disturbing. Last night I dreamed my mother and I was traveling in my blue Mustang and we were in a rural area. There was a bad accident on the highway and we had to leave my car and walk because one of the cars was on fire. We went through this community and they had a tent church, white and blue trimming. We cut through not realizing it was a church until we got in. We went to go inside the church. It felt so peaceful. I, I could feel the presence of God and felt I wanted to preach there. And I felt bad for not being able to stay there. So I asked the administrator, how could I sow into this ministry? 
on the way out, my mom, my mom had taken two leather bags, like small suitcases. I wasn't aware. While I waited for her outside, two two light, two light green Komodo dragons started chasing me, and they were fast. I jumped in my husband's red truck and tried to run them over, but they jumped on top of the truck and were thrown down by me speeding and slamming on the brakes. Somehow I got them into one 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 of those bags my mom had taken and I forgot to tell her she opened the bag when she came out and we had to throw everything at these dragons and kill one. One ran after we killed the other. The owner of these dragons were a member of this church and he was a little upset and said these dragons were normally nice to everyone else. He was suspicious of our actions. My husband eventually came to rescue us, but when he came, we had two trucks and one, a dark red, was filled with stuff, furniture, et cetera, like we had moved. We had to figure out who would drive this second red truck. That was my mama's. This dream deals with uh, a couple of things. The first one is the accident. There's, you're about to encounter something that was not planned that's why you it was an accident then you got out of the accident then y'all walked uh and then you came to this church so you're about to be exposed to a place that one of the person in the place is operating from major witchcraft when you when you get there you, by y'all appearing there while y'all going there Y'all going to expose somebody inside of there that is using witchcraft and manipulation and the dragons. The good news is you killed one of the dragons, but the bad news is one of them got away. So there's a spiritual warfare that you're going to go through. OK, your mom carrying the suitcase represents she, the anointing on your mom, has the capacity to contain to contain the sorcery witchcraft that you're about to encounter. That's what the suitcase means. It means that your mother, there's a grace, there's an anointing, there's a warfare on your mother that God wants you to carry now. When you do this, there's a reward that's going to come. When this reward comes, that's why you had two trucks. Trucks represent a type of ministry or size of ministry. One is, is dark red. So that means that the spirit of the Lord is going to be upon that one. The other one is carrying furniture, means that the, 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 the stuff that you would need for this ministry is already provided. Y'all not going to have to work for this. Y'all not going to have to labor for this. It's going to be provided when you go through this warfare, you're going to see that you're going to get blessed. That's why in the dream, you say it's a way to sow into this ministry. So God is showing you as you sow into this, uh, into a ministry, God's going to birth your ministry. And from that seed, God's going to give you and your husband everything y'all need to be successful in your ministry. Wow, that the son, that is amazing. I just love it. Well, listen, since wow, 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 this was Dream Interpretation Live, Dr. Francis Miles, Apostle Lee Robertson. We're excited, and uh, but I want to do something before as we close. Is yeah, since listen, we have been so blessed to have Apostle Lee Robertson out of Jacksonville. We keep bringing it together with I to do this. Now you see what the Lord is putting us together. I can, I mean, I, I, my, my biggest specialty is the theology of dreams. But man, he is the interpreter, you know, <laughs> and so we just have an amazing time. But we want to multiply interpreters because as he told you, in the last days, dreams and visions will be abandoned. It will be the language of the Holy Spirit for the last days. You can't miss what God is saying. So I want to encourage you, encourage you. And I don't think I have to encourage you very, very much because many of you probably already are at the same place where I am. But I want to encourage you right now by the Spirit of God. You know, as we get to exit out, if you are being blessed by Apostle Lee Robertson, today I feel a need to do a special offering for the man of God. So, oh, wow. hey, listen, you know, you can simply, there are different ways to give below, you know, mm -hmm. and you can simply go to the different ways to give. 
you know, and just write friends, try just write for Apostle Lee Robertson. If you say Apostle Lee Robertson, uh, we will know what to do, okay? So in the uh, comment section of your giving, just put Apostle Lee Robertson, you know, special seed or love offering, whatever the Lord have you to do, you know. And as you saw that seed, believe God for the anointing that's on his life for dream interpretation to come upon you. So, so a portion of what you saw today will be given to the man of God by the Spirit of God for being a blessing. So as you give today, just remember that you are also releasing your faith for the same anointing for dream interpretation that's upon his life, yes. be upon your life. Because the anointing you saw yes. into is the anointing that comes to your house. So yes. I, again, I encourage you there are different ways to give below. Use it, you know, and uh, be a blessing to the man of God. But what a word today. What a word the man of God has preached today. You know, I can tell you today, you know, if you just joined us, the man of God preached today, you know, in today's message was dreams and visions and the last days because in the last days, dreams and vision will be big time and you want to know. So I'm praying that many of you will be able to self-interpret with accuracy. Can you imagine yeah. what would happen in life if you can interpret your dreams with accuracy? Because then, you, then your application will be accurate. Your manifestation will be accurate. The yes. breakthroughs will be much better because you'll be responding properly because you know exactly what God is trying to say. What a gift to have. So I know that uh, my spiritual son, Apostle Lee Robertson, my God, he carries that anointing for this. And I want you to tap into that grace by the Spirit of yeah. God. So again, there are different modalities of giving and below you. Just write in the comment section so that we know. You can save, you know, um, love offering, Apostle Lee Robertson, seed offering, Apostle Lee Robertson. And I know we will know what to do by the Spirit, by the grace of God. Apostle, can you just pray for the people as we come yes. to the end of the interpretation for today? Yeah. So, Father, I thank you. I just bless you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just decree and declare that those that have been struggling with dreams, they will be awakened. I unlock the dreams right now that they will flow like liquid oil. And I share this grace, this anointing of interpretation of dream upon those by faith that have tapped into it. I decree and I bless every seed and I command a thousandfold return. I decree this now through the blood of the Lamb and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I, I'm enjoying this dream, dream interpretation yeah. live. Uh, Pastor, I can't wait for us to give them the book the Lord has for us. Now, please yes. subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it right now. As a matter of fact, I want you as many as possible. Let people, listen, I want to deputize you to be an evangelist for Francis Miles International YouTube by letting other people subscribe. So I'm, I'm, I'm deputizing you in Jesus' name to become a subscribe yes. evangelist. So become my subscribe evangelist. Let me you know because you know that we are releasing good stuff here. Let as many people Amen. know that Francis Mars, he brings amazing guests on his TV, on his TV, on his YouTube channel, plus his own stuff that's out there. So that, yeah, so they, so you don't, they don't miss it. It doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost them a dime. It clips some time to click on the subscribe button, the notification button. But they will be happy forever. They will be thanking you because of what God is going to be doing. So please, again, click subscribe and then also click click on the, no, the notification icon as well on YouTube. We love you so much. What a day it has been. Apostle, again, thank you for coming for Dream Interpretation Live, man of God. Yes, yes, Dad. Thank you for having me, Dad. I appreciate you. Uh, we love you and I appreciate you so much. Shalom, shalom. Everybody have a nice day by the blood of Christ in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So how can glory and the flood work together? Grace is the only possibility. So grace 
as a way of bridging the gap between the flawless and the flawed has always been the dominant principle of the whole speech. Don't ever think that this day you're not going to risk something. There is a risking. In order to become creative warriors, you have to risk. She risked her life to go before the king to a place that she got supernatural favor and grace. Satan never fights you on the basis of who you think you are. He fights you on the basis of who God says you are. So every time Satan comes, he comes to challenge you on the regular, if you are the son of God. I'm here to tell you that Jesus through the Holy Ghost is still working miracles in the earth today. If I'm telling you he's still alive and his spirit is still in us and he is still working miracles right now. I'm going to tell you this and I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, God will remove every form of iniquity, every ounce of iniquity that has been around you. The Bible says a decree is like a hammer. Shall I not break the rock? Declare something in the realm of the spirit and watch the hand of the Lord perform it. He will do it. We have to understand that the greatest weapon we have been given as spirit-speaking people, created as a spirit of God, we have spirit ability to create and to kill out. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth and now he's ascended back to the Father and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it.